subscribe to the motivate channel click on the bell icon and hit that like button hello and welcome to motbeam and the kawasaki ninja 300 has been in the indian market for the past 4 years we've had the experience of owning this bike for the past 3 years we've clocked approximately 14000 kilometers on this bike it's been a joyful experience so far but it's had its fair share of ups and downs Here's how our long-term experience has been with the Ninja 300. To begin with, I'd like to talk about the things I like about this bike. For starters, the looks. It clearly has a lot of presence in a crowded place. This lime green color that's very unique to the Kawasaki Ninja, it just looks extremely beautiful. I can't help but keep looking back at this bike every time I walk past it. It gets a lot of attention and if I have to say this is by far the most attractive quarter liter bike that you can currently buy in the market. Speaking of ergonomics, the Kawasaki Ninja 300 is a very comfortable machine. For long distances, I keep doing Mumbai to Pune journeys on and off. It's a very comfortable bike and even after going miles and miles this bike does not tire you. The one thing that really helps is the large fuel tank that ensures you don't have to take frequent stops in order to refuel. The 17 liter tank just makes sure that you can just go on and on and on without taking any sort of breaks. If I had any sort of gripe with this bike in terms of ergonomics, I think it would be the ground clearance. I feel this bike is a little too low and tends to scrape over sharp bumps and potholes and there is nothing you can do about it either except for going over it slowly or avoiding it altogether. Now coming back to the pillion comfort. I think the pillion comfort in this bike is really nice from what I've been told. It's a very comfortable seat and the hidden grab rails located underneath the seat make sure that they don't ruin the clean look of the bike. Coming down to storage, under seat storage is actually pretty generous. You'd be surprised what you can store underneath the seat. I've stored as much as my phone, my wallet, my keys, and a torch all at the same time so that's plenty of space speaking of build quality this bike is very well built the panels the switch gears they are of impeccable quality and it shows in terms of performance this motorcycle really blows you away Engine's character is sort of like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. When you're moving through slow-moving traffic and you just ease in the throttle, this bike is very smooth. Power delivery is very linear. There's no chain rattling or knocking. It's just very smooth, giving you a very joyful experience. Once you catch the highway and you whack open the throttle, you start seeing the Mr. Hyde side of the engine. This engine can redline all the way at 13,000 RPM while sounding extremely sweet at the same time. This bike is very smooth even at higher RPMs there are no vibrations nothing this bike is just as smooth as you want it to be in spite of having such a high redline there are no vibrations whatsoever and the smoothness is what wins you over when you're at speeds as low as 30 or 40 km per hour this bike can still go on in the 5th gear or the 4th gear with ease whereas when you're hitting top speed and trying to cruise on the highway 6th gear 100 km per hour 6000 rpm this bike just cruises like butter Need a quick overtake? All you have to do is just open the throttle. When it comes to handling, the Kawasaki Ninja 300 really knows how to mask its weight. The ride quality is supple, and the handling is just fantastic. 
If anything that lets this bike down, it's the tires. They don't provide adequate amount of grip and I feel like stock tires could have been better. Speaking of bad tires, they don't really help the braking much since this bike has very weak anchors. In terms of braking, this bike just lacks that feedback and that solid confidence inspiring grip that you would want from your brakes. The lack of ABS is very prominent. In 2017 and still no ABS and only new colour schemes? Really Kawasaki? In terms of headlight illumination, the headlights are really strong and they give good enough illumination at night. The mirrors give good visibility too. While you're sitting in the riding position, your arms do obstruct a little but it just takes a little bit of tinkering around with the mirrors to get the right position for you. When it comes to service, this bike is very reasonable. I've never paid more than 4000 for a service. It only starts getting expensive when you start paying for major parts like the fairing or any panel. It gets a little too expensive then. In terms of service network, this company isn't doing so well anymore. Once upon a time, it was very easy to just walk into a KTM dealership, get your bike serviced and head on back home. It's not the same anymore. <laughs> I think there's just one dealership in the whole of Bombay and that's quite a hiccup for people that want to buy a Kawasaki. After three years, I can happily say it's been a fun experience owning this motorcycle. But if you ask me now, would I like to buy this bike? My answer would probably be no. Because no matter how good this bike is, the competition's just moved way too further ahead. And this bike's major sore point is the service network and the lack of ABS. Unless and until Kawasaki does not bring out the next generation Ninja 300 and resolve its service network issue, this is not a bike I would recommend. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to Motorbeam.